Hi, this is Lou, welcome to my channel. And today I'm drawing this little building, which is this really cute little deli, uh, which is in Ashbourne in Derbyshire. I was there the other week and I took some photos, uh, so some things that I might want to draw. Um, so I'm starting with a pencil sketch and just trying to get the proportions of this building right. Um, it's a little kind of short squat building considering it's kind of three stories. Uh, but uh, I, I drew it quite short and squat and decided that was a bit too much, a bit too far. So I rubbed it out again and uh, started again trying to get the proportions right. And another thing I did wrong uh, is that I put those windows uh, in the kind of the top two stories of the building right in the centre. And then I looked at the photo again and went, oh, actually, they're not. They're slightly to the left. And the shop is slightly to the right and the door to the shop is slightly to the right. So everything's just a little bit wonky and not what you'd expect. Uh, but then that's why I like the building. That's that's kind of probably what drew me, drew me to it. It was that character that it's got. So once I've got the proportions in, uh, I uh, didn't do too much detail with pencil, which I always try to do. Um, and I'm just going around very, very lightly uh, with my pen. I'm using a 0.2 uh, fine liner for the whole drawing here. And uh, sometimes I'm kind of putting a bit of pressure, not pressure on it, but yeah, sometimes I'm using it kind of full strength and getting a nice solid line. But a lot of the time, because the building is quite, um, yeah, it's got some wonky bits, it's got some bendy lines, I'm kind of using some broken lines uh, just to try and, yeah, well, I'll give myself a little bit of kind of breathing space uh, so I can uh, go over a line if I want to reinforce it, but also just to kind of give the building that character. So there's a few lines that I want to reinforce, like the gutters are quite dark, um, so if I put an extra line under there and just reinforce that, then that will make it stand out just a little bit more. And then I'm going around quite carefully with the windows. So I drew two kind of rectangles, in, one inside the other for the window frame, and then drawing in each pane of the window. And then I'm reinforcing, again, reinforcing some of those lines, putting some extra ones in for some of the kind of the wood trim detail. And this is a sash window, so the kind of upper bit sticks out a little bit, so a stronger line underneath that uh, sash window will just make it look like there's a, a nice shadow there. And then there's this tall window which has a lovely kind of arched brick detail above it, so I'm going to try and get the lines in for that and get a nice curve on that. And then again, uh, a line for the outside of the window, a line for the inside of the window frame. And then this one's got an extra line for like some kind of trim detail. And then again, the line across for the bottom of the sash window. And then I can put each window pane in separately. And then again, I'm reinforcing some of those lines just to show that there's a, a darker shadow there. And then there's a few little details on the building that I want to get in. There's like an extra big brick there. And then the kind of, yeah, the, the shop down below has got this kind of decorative trim above it. Uh, with some kind of fancy shapes cut out of the of woodwork. So some like scallop details below it. And then there's like, you can't see them. They're little fleur de lis on the top. But I'm just putting a little wiggle uh, every so often and getting the impression of that. Uh, 
and then I can start putting in the shop windows and I'm starting with the pillars on the outside of them. So they've got some nice fancy pillars with some turned woodwork. And those pillars just uh, protrude out a little bit further than the bottom of the building. So one, two, three pillars, and then I go to put in the fourth pillar and I realise there's not one on that side. Because again, this is a quirky building with lots of character. The top of the windows is like a little bit of a bay, but it's very hard to see that. So I'm just kind of drawing my line in three and leaving a little bit of a, a gap and drawing a line again. And the same on the bottom of the window. Let's draw a little line a uh, straight line along, and they're angled ever so slightly, but you can hardly see it. In fact, I've, ha I've, I've probably overdone it. And then I can put in each window pane on these bottom windows as well, the shop windows. And at this point, I realise that I've kind of left too big a gap in the middle of the windows, but there's not much I can do about it now. I've just got to kind of work with it, so. There's actually just a really thin bar uh, on the actual windows, but I've put a, th a slightly thicker one. That's it, that's, that's the big deal. I try and correct that slightly when I do the second window. And then I can put the door in. It's got a nice little kind of decorative window above it with some kind of diamond shaped panes of glass in it. So uh, just a couple of lines to indicate that. And then any detail that I can find on the door I put in. So like a line across the middle, the door handle, there's like some molding. Um, and then the, uh, the panes of glass in the top half of the door as well. I make my top three too big, so the bottom two uh, look a little squished, but that's okay. And then I try and write in the name of the shop. Um, what's it called? It doesn't really have a name. It says home cooked meats on the next on the left and. Uh, English and continental cheeses on the right, but you can't read that, so I just put in a few little kind of scribbles and it makes it look like there's writing on there. I decide to do um, some of the kind of peeling paintwork and put in a few little marks for that and for the air brick below uh, one of the windows as well. There's a couple of things on the building, kind of on the brickwork, that I want to get in. So there's a hanging basket. It's got some kind of fancy ironwork hanger, but I can't really see the details in that. So just a few little scribbly lines to give me the impression of that. And then the thing next to it is actually like a shop sign that sticks out into the road, but because I'm looking at the building straight on, all you can see is the very edge of it. Now I decide to put in the roof tiles. And all I'm doing is just a little line 
I allow my hand to kind of wobble up and down a little bit and I'm using very, very light pressure so it skips kind of across the paper. It's a little kind of shield shaped thing on the front of the building. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I had to get it in. And then there was bunting strung all across the street in between all of the different houses and buildings. So I just wanted to get that in as well. Makes it look nice and festive. And I decide to put in the brick detail on the little arch above the window. Uh, at this point, I do wonder about whether I should have done the bricks um, all the way over the building. And actually, I think it would have looked good. Um, but I didn't, so that's what we're left with. But I might try it again another time. Um, I normally wouldn't put every brick in, but I thought for this one, it might look quite good. Um, I decide after rubbing the lines out that the building kind of looks a bit like it's floating and um, it's not kind of anchored to anything so I decide to put in just a little bit of pavement and road in front of it just to make it look like it's on a street and not kind of floating in midair. I um and are about whether to put in the little gate to the side and I do like it but in the end I decide to leave it off. For most of the paintings that I do, I pick a limited palette of two or three colours and uh, and then kind of add to it as I feel like it needs it. So for this one, I'm starting with the brick colour and I'm going in with uh, Burnt Sienna. That's a nice ready brown colour. And then I'm adding in red in a couple of areas and blue in a couple of other areas, just to kind of give it a bit of differentiation in tone um, across the across the building because it does you know it looks a bit dirty in places and then a bit brighter in others I'm working fairly quickly just to ensure that I don't end up with any like hard lines where the paint's dry. But I'm also being fairly careful to go around like the bunting and the hanging basket and not paint over them. And I do the chimney stack as well, the same. As I'm looking at this uh, image, I realised that one of the things I quite liked about it was how full and busy the windows are, but I haven't put any detail in there, so I just put in a few lines to suggest that there are things in the windows. Um, I'm doing this incredibly lightly. Now, the way I paint the windows, um, 
it's one of those things where I kind of tried something new and I'm not really sure whether it worked or not. So you can tell me what you think. Um, but I, I probably went a bit too far and it's a bit, it's a bit complicated. Um, I'm not really quite sure what I'm doing. I end up kind of going over them like several times. You'll see in a minute. I'll, I'll tell you what I've done and why I've done it. And, uh, you can tell me what you think. So I add a little bit of indigo blue to my uh, Burnt Sienna mix just to create myself a kind of slaty greeny blue colour uh, for the roof. You might see me adding a couple of other colours into it occasionally just to try and change the tone a bit, try and decide what I want for this particular uh, painting. decide I want the roof to be a little bit bluer, a little bit cooler, so I just add a little bit more of that indigo blue into the mix while it's still wet. So now I'm getting started on the windows, I'm adding a little bit more of that burnt sienna into my kind of dark grey, bluey slaty mix. Uh, to create a dark colour to paint the shadows on the windows. There's a few things going on here. So firstly you can see some of the things on the inside of the windows and then you can see some of the reflections on the outside of the windows too. So what I'm trying to do, maybe not very successfully, is paint in the dark areas, the bits on the windows you can see where it's really dark. So I'm painting them um, pretty uniformly and then I'm just going in with a towel to dab them uh, which just creates variations in the tone so you get some slightly lighter and some slightly darker areas and I think it looks a bit more natural if you do that. And then the windows at the bottom I'm kind of doing the same thing and I'm leaving a couple of places where there's kind of things in the window that um, I, you know, look quite bright on the picture. I'm just trying to paint in the darks at the minute. So what I'm doing now is using a much more watery mix of the same colour on the lighter areas of the reflections on the windows. That's because I didn't want them to be stark white, I think they looked too too bright. But I'm putting a, a kind of a fairly um, watery wash over them and then blotting up any excess because it is very watery. And it just gives you like a little bit of colour on there. It's not completely stark white. And now my paint's dried a little bit. I can see that my darks aren't as dark as I want them to be. So I'm going in again uh, and trying to make them a little bit darker. I'm going to leave the windows for now and I'm going to start trying to mix up a green, like a sagey green for the bottom of the, well, for the painted bit of the shop. I start with an olive green, which is one of my favourite greens in this set. 
And then I mix in a little bit of my grey blue and then little bits of the burnt sienna and the indigo blue just to kind of, yeah, try and neutralise the tone a bit. And then I go in and paint all the window frames. I'm using a fairly small brush uh, for the for the whole of this painting, and that allows me to use the very tip of it to create these very fine lines in the window panes. I think this is a size four brush. You'll notice now that I forgot to do the door. Um, I got very excited and started mixing up a nice limey green for the foliage in the hanging basket and then didn't realise that I'd used up the green that I'd mixed for the shop so I'm going to have to go back to that in a short while and uh, try and mix that colour up again. So now my uh, windows and window frames are dry I'm just mixing up a variety of little reds and oranges and browns and just dabbing them into the windows just to give that sense of, you know, there's a lot going on in there. I don't want to add too many different colours. And actually what you can see in the window does tend to be kind of red and orange and brown. So that's not too difficult. Um, I, I'm not paying too much attention to what colour goes where. They're just going in a few different little places. Now this does make it look a little bit messy um, and I know that and what I have planned to do is to go over the windows again with another like really light wash of that slaty greeny blue colour um, and kind of yeah try and bring them all together and neutralise them a bit. Also feeling again like the darks aren't dark enough so I'm putting in yet another layer dark on my windows. At this point I'm wondering to myself, why didn't I just colour them all in? The one colour and not worry about it. So now I'm going back to my door. I decided to start using some of that colour to add in um, some of the kind of darker areas, just um, creating some uh, different colours in the green, just to make it look kind of old and worn. Add in some greens and some blues at that point. And then my slaty colour again for the glass. Now this is the bit on the windows where I'm using 
a, a kind of nice dilute wash of my uh, shadow colour to go over the whole window, including all of those little bits of uh, stuff that I put in there to try and bring them together and to cry and uh, create a difference between the window panes and the window frames. Now I feel like we're nearly there. Mixing up more of a brownie tone for the pavement. Add in tiny little details like the bunting, the flags. There's some red and blue on those. And now making more of a shadow tone to go in and reinforce any areas of shadow. So under anything that's going to be sticking out, like the drain pipes, some of the windows, and definitely this um, kind of shop sign uh, at the bottom. Shadows around the doors. And then a couple of finishing touches, some flowers in the hanging basket. That like um, extra brick, the shop sign, anything else that just needs a bit of something. And now my door is all dry, just going in and do more on the window panes in the door. So there we go. There's my little Ashbourne deli. Uh, do let me know what you think, uh, especially about my ridiculously complex window process. But if you liked it, then uh, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, then do subscribe. Um, if you want to give this a go, I put the uh, the reference image up on my website and you can follow along there. Um, and if you do give this a go, uh, you can always post it on Instagram and tag me there. I'm at Lou Rachel Davis, and I love to see the work that you make. So thanks very much for watching today. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Bye bye.